Tesla wants to build North America's very first all-electric charging corridor in the United States. Yes, folks, you heard that right. Tesla is seeking nearly $100 million from the U.S. government to build nine electric semi-truck charging stations along a route from the southern border of Texas to northern California. As we all know, the United States relies heavily upon commercial trucks to move goods, but it has severely struggled to limit the sector's greenhouse gas emissions over the past decade. So if successful, Tesla's project will be the first of its kind kind of charging network in the U.S., enabling electrification of trucks that we had never really seen before. However, folks, as great as it sounds, there are a certain set of challenges and hurdles that Tesla and other OEMs really have to come to build this kind of charging network for extremely heavy-duty vehicles. And not only are these challenges a result of somebody like Tesla dropping the ball with their semi-program having been delayed by more than three years and still not being in volume production, but it has mostly to do with the way battery electric vehicles function from a core technology perspective. And those hurdles are exactly what I want to break down in this video. So to start things off, folks, let's get right into it and look at the proposed charging route in the southern U.S. As you can see, Tesla expects to put in around nine charging stations with four to five mega charging stalls each anywhere from Fremont, California, all the way down to Fort Stockton, Texas. This obviously is more than a 1,000 mile route, which would enable some key logistics trade routes in the southern US, enabling and making it easier for companies to adopt electric semi-trucks. Now, this sort of vertical approach to the charging problem is obviously an extremely smart tactic. This is exactly how they built their supercharger network to enable consumers to buy their electric vehicles. And similar to what something like Nikola Motors is doing or Hyzon with their hydrogen initiatives by investing in hydrogen ecosystem alongside hydrogen trucks, Tesla is planning to do the exact same. However, folks, this kind of charging project really undermines the broader issues the semi project is facing right now from Tesla, which revolves primarily around their production roadmap. Because you see, folks, the technology to charge such a huge truck in a matter of 30 to 60 minutes is already here. Megawatt Charging Standard, or MCS, is already under development through government facilities, and Tesla is already testing their own 750 kilowatt system, which they expect to scale to 1,000 kilowatts in the very near future. The cooling standards as well as the communication protocols have already been engineered and tested. It's now more of a problem on how to adopt these into the market and bring real trucks on the road that can use them. However, folks, it's that bringing the trucks on the road that seems to be the more prudent problem for OEMs like Tesla. There already exist multiple battery electric trucks on the market in the US. They range anywhere from class one to class eight. But for the market that Tesla is marketing the semi for, which is medium to long haul trucking with a range of 500 miles, the market is a lot slower to move and has completely different demands than that for intraday or back to base delivery. At the scale that the Tesla Semi is built at, which is a battery anywhere from 800 kilowatt hours to 1000 kilowatt hours, the material and mineral requirements for the cell production is clearly too high, even for somebody like the like of Tesla. As a matter of fact, although Tesla delivered 15 semi trucks to its launch partner PepsiCo in December of last year, they have failed to really ramp up production of the vehicle. And as a matter of fact, their vehicles have been breaking down in the pilot tests multiple times. Now, don't get me wrong, the Tesla Semi project has not been canceled, and it is an extremely important part of Tesla's portfolio and the broader industry, because at the end of the day, they're the ones that set the industry forward towards electrification of heavy duty trucks. 
The issue more so arises from the fact that if right now during a time of record high demand for electric vehicles and even semi-trucks, if Tesla is not able to ramp up production of their semi-truck, then what chances do other OEMs and startups have if they want to develop a competing technology? Because as we all know, a market is a collection of different companies with different value propositions and different advantages. And Tesla is just going to be one piece of that overall puzzle. And based on the fact that Tesla has avoided releasing the real gross weight of the truck as well as its battery capacity, it turns out the issue might just revolve around the limitations that lithium ion cells provide at such a large scale, not even including the fact that charging them is a whole another challenge. And why exactly is that the case? Well, as you can see, folks, because the infrastructure requirements for each another battery truck on the market would be directly proportional to the unit costs of each charging stall. With a gasoline or a hydrogen or a liquid fuel based ecosystem, you don't need to build more stations for gas or hydrogen if more trucks come on the market, because each station can serve many more trucks than an equivalent charging stall can in a day because obviously it takes over 5x the time to refuel a battery truck versus a hydrogen or diesel. You can clearly see that by just how many Tesla superchargers exist on the market today and the equivalent number of stalls that exist at each station. There's well north of anywhere from 30,000 to 50,000 of those in North America, which, if you think about it, is a pretty significant amount of capital investment. And as it turns out, Tesla doesn't really want to fork up its own cash for that when it comes to the semi. Because don't forget, folks, to be economical, the semi needs to charge anywhere from 750 to 1000 kilowatts, which would refuel the battery anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes. That is over 3x the average rating of a Tesla supercharger, which ranges from 150 to 250 kilowatts, which means that the grid needs and demands are going to be three times as much. And as you can see, although a Tesla supercharger seems like a very simple installment, it has a lot of back the meter equipment, whether that be inverters, DC conversion systems, underground power lines, and even net metering facilities which as it turns out can get quite complicated to install and permit. And more importantly, if you have nine stalls of 750 kilowatt stations, most non-industrial facilities and grid entry points will simply not have the capability to supply that much power consistently. Instead, you would need to upgrade the substation that that line connects to, which in and of itself not only costs tens of thousands of dollars, but it takes more than 12 months in some cases to permit from local authorities. Unlike a gas station, which might just need one to $2 million to commission, construct and get up and running, a traditional charging station will not only cost similar, but take a lot longer to commission. Meanwhile, your duty cycle or return on investment for that charging station is going to be much lower. Because obviously electricity margins are quite low compared to diesel or even hydrogen, not to mention the fact that most electricity today is still not available at green levels. Because as we know, over 40% of energy on the grid is still sourced from coal and oil, and that fluctuates based on the time of day that you are charging. However, despite these challenges, as we all know, if there's one company that can help solve this challenge, it is undoubtedly Tesla. It's going to be exciting to see how they ramp up production of the semi if they even decide to do so, what price it comes out at, and how economical it is for real users when it comes to competing technologies like ammonia, hydrogen, and even renewable natural gas. As usual, folks, let me know your thoughts on the situation down in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.